afternoon. My name is Gent Paparisto, and I'm from the AWR group of National Instruments. Today I'll talk about some advances in system level modeling of the large phase array antennas. So uh, first I'll talk about uh, briefly about the 5G goals and 5G design. As you know, uh, there, there are a lot of companies working on this, a lot of researchers, and uh, they have some very ambitious goals about 5G. Um, they want to uh, have the 10,000 time increase in traffic, uh, 1,000 time increase in capacity, uh, much lower latency, very high uh, data rates, uh, peak data, data rates and sustained data rates, very good battery life compared to the existing um, uh, systems, uh, low, cost, uh, low cost for the devices. And uh, so this is a very challenging project and there are many researchers and, and companies working on it. So uh, some of the enabling technologies that people are looking at are, uh, of course, using more spectrum, uh, using smaller cells and, and much more, uh, uh, and many more cells than the, the current uh, 4G systems. Uh, the power efficiency, there are many uh, efforts in, in improving the power efficiency of the, uh, of the devices. Um, there is uh, a whole uh, slew of, of efforts in creating new modulation schemes that will help the coexistence of, of the many different devices that will be present in 5G. And, and uh, a very important one is the high directivity antennas which are, are used in the MIMO systems. Um, so what we'll do today is that we will focus on the, on the massive MIMO design. So massive MIMO is a, 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 a term that is used uh, a lot in the, um, in the 5G world, 5G uh, community. And it means uh, MIMO antenna. Well, it means antennas with a lot of elements, uh, up to uh, 128 elements. And, but this can be from 16, 32, 64, or 128. Uh, the, there will be two main uh, goals for for using MIMO uh, for, for using large uh, antennas. Uh, one would be beam forming, and that uh, what what mean what that means is that um, that this. 5G systems are expected to pinpoint their signals to particular users and track these users so that the, uh, uh, they always uh, get good coverage. Uh, but on the other hand, this will also help with having much, more, uh, much uh, simpler receivers for on, the, on the user equipment side of things. Uh, the other dimension in these um, uh, uh, large antenna uh, is uh, actually MIMO itself, which means that uh, these systems will provide uh, spatial multiplexing capabilities and that will uh, in increase the user throughput. Now to, to achieve that, uh, we, must, we, we actually face quite, uh, quite unique uh, design challenges. Uh, first of all, the, any large antenna systems, and especially the MIMO systems are, are difficult to analyze and, and complex to analyze. So um, uh, another thing that complicates, uh, complicates it is that uh, we're moving to higher and higher frequencies, so the RF impairments become ever more significant. Uh, we also mentioned that we're looking into advanced uh, modulation schemes such as FBMC, GFDM, UFMC, or, or modified versions of, of the, the current FDM, OFDM. So these systems can be actually more sensitive to nonlinearities than, than in the past. So uh, we can just look at the modulation schemes uh, separately from the from the, the whole system from the RF links. We got a uh, uh, analyze them in the presence of the RF links and see how they perform when uh, we, we push things to, we push our devices into uh, compression or near compression. And uh, the last thing is the higher frequencies. We're talking now about millimeter wave frequencies, 38 gigahertz uh, in the 70 plus gigahertz. Uh, as you know, there is uh, much higher propagation loss in these frequencies. The, uh, the devices uh, the, our uh, power amplifiers uh, typically have much lower gains in, in these type of frequencies and certain um, devices may not be 
as as good now when when we're talking about much wider bandwidths that will be available in in these uh, uh, frequencies. So we might have to rethink the the design of these devices and and maybe move uh, further than the traditional techniques used in such designs. Um, another thing is uh, we're now uh, facing facing the challenges like uh, having to move from lumped element designs to distributed element designs, and your your layout becomes really a, a, a device itself. So it, it's not it, you know having a device that needs fixing is not as simple as swapping swapping uh, components out because you might have to re rethink the whole layout, the whole uh, uh, design. So uh, it will be more difficult to uh, fix things once they come back from tape out. So we really need to do a lot more work uh, prior to, to sending things out for, for uh, prototyping. So uh, focusing on the, the MIMO uh, RF systems, the MIMO system modeling really includes the uh, antenna elements uh, in the phased array, as well as the RF links of, of individual elements. As you know, the, each of the, these elements has its own RF link. So uh, when we talk about MIMOS, we really need to include the, uh, the RF link uh, impairments in the overall performance of the antenna so that um, we get meaningful results and results that will actually be very close to to the final results of, uh, of uh, or measure, measured results of, of these devices once they're built. Um, so we really need to investigate effects of specific RF links for, for each of these uh, elements uh, in the antenna uh, pattern of the overall system. And this will also be a, a, a design process that will help us define matching networks for, uh, for, for these systems. So uh, at AWR, we, we use our uh, system simulator, VSS, which is, stands for Visual System Simulator. And it is a, uh, a very powerful simulation tool that has budget analysis capabilities, and which are, are much more powerful than traditional uh, spreadsheets. Uh, we have spur analysis tools that allow you to find the, the heritage of the tones and, and and modify your design so that you avoid unwanted spurs. We have time domain end-to-end -end simulations that will allow you to uh, uh, measure any um, system level uh, quantities like bit error rate, EVM, ACPR, etc. But uh, what's unique about VSS is that uh, it's, it's um, unique uh, and powerful RF modeling uh, capabilities. So we're able to seamlessly co-simulate with our circuit tool, Microwave Office, and you can actually optimize your circuit designs based on system level measurements. And we also can co-simulate with other tools that uh, uh, and, and perform hardware in loop simulations. And, and what's important is that any design you, you, you create in VSS would allow you to perform any of these functions without needing to import or export or, or control blocks. So uh, it, is, it, it is very convenient for, for users. Uh, so now, going back to our problem, we're looking at a MIMO system, uh, which in this case, we're, we're gonna consider the, the uh, base station MIMO. Uh, so we have a source that goes through a transmitter phased array through a channel, and we'll have a receiver antenna, and we, can, we may have more processing, but right now we will look at the uh, uh, transmitter phased array. So if we dig down into this uh, transmitter phased array, we'll see that this will contain multiple um, elements. In this case, we're looking at a, little, uh, at a real simple uh, 16 element phased array, uh, four by four phased array. And each of these elements actually it is its own, um, it, it has its own RF link. And as you all know, one of the challenges when designing systems like this is the the impedance matching between the PA and the antenna. So uh, this impedance mismatch is something that we will, uh, we will look into today. Um, so the design and, and analysis of such uh, phased arrays um, it pre present unique challenges because uh, you know, traditional approaches may be good enough for very small phased arrays, but when you start moving into larger and larger phased arrays, then, then uh, 
you need more processing power, more memory, and, and they take much, much longer. So we, in, in VSS, we've created uh, a new functionality that would allow us to handle phased arrays of hundreds or actually thousands of, of elements. And it, it does not only allow you to, to analyze this, but also it makes it a lot easier and it facilitates the uh, the uh, implementation of different array geometries and tapers and imperfections and, and configuration of the phased array. Uh, it makes it easier for the user to, uh, to, to model the uh, radiation patterns of individual elements and, and mutual coupling, as well as characterize the RF link of each of these individual um, elements. So uh, going back to our problem, what we did is that we, we looked into the uh, impedance mismatch between the, the PA and the antenna and we, we looked over a, a range of impedance values and we can actually um, set you know, these impedance values and uh, on the Smith, Smith chart and then we have our system simulator evaluate the performance of our, um, of our design over this range of impedance values and we run different measurements and we look at these measurements and, and and from them we draw our requirements for the matching networks. So what we did was we actually, as I said, we looked at this 4x4 rectangular array and, and we can uh, very easily move to, um, to, to actually bigger arrays, but this was a very simple example. It's a uh, lambda over 2 element spacing between the elements and we used a Dolph Chebyshev gain taper and we use patch elements for the, the, for the antenna uh, array elements. So uh, we looked at the mismatch effects and um, the figure, uh, the, the blue curve on the left shows the, uh, the array response when there is perfect matching between the PA and the antenna elements. And, and then the picture of the, on the right, it shows results for each of those uh, gamma points, the impedance points on the, uh, on the Smith chart. And you can, you can see, uh, as you can see, there is a, a wide variation uh, in results. And you can see that uh, the uh, main lobe response changes a lot, the side lobe response changes a lot. So uh, we can, you know, one, one quantity that you can uh, calculate is, as I said, it's the uh, antenna um, array response. However, we can, we can look at much more than that. We can now take the same system and we can drive it with modulated signals and we can perform system level measurements like EVM, ACPR, etc. We can uh, plot all these measurements or all these contours on the Smith chart and we can investigate the performance of these matching networks and, and use our system level measurements to actually derive the, def uh, de the, the requirements for these matching networks. And um, in AWR we have designed this automated analysis uh, flow. So uh, we, you know, a user can define the system architecture, like modulation, et cetera, can conf uh, configure the antenna array, can define the RF link, uh, and then it can uh, define the, the um, gamma points for, for an ad that will be used for analysis. Uh, it can configure the desired measurements, and finally it can hit a run button and then run this automated analysis. So what do you do? Uh, what do we get after that? It, we see results like in, in the images below where you can see EVM or ACPR. So in this case, we have the ACPR contours on the left and EVM contours on the right. And you can look at uh, the, these measurements, uh, measurement contours plotted on a Smith chart. So uh, you can look at these results. You can identify the, the regions where the requirements are met. And that, that will actually tell you, uh, give you the, the definitions for the matching networks. So we can, we can go back and we can now uh, uh, intelligently de design our, our uh, matching networks and make sure that once we do that, our overall system will work pretty well. So in conclusion, uh, we, we showed a very, uh, a rather simple example, but there is a, a lot of processing that goes and a lot of analysis and design that went behind this, uh, this simple example. And, and it actually shows the, the, the new advances that uh, in VSS, in, in VSS development that were, were used for, for this work in phased array design. 
uh, it showed how we, you know, as I mentioned, these, these advances can let us handle uh, large phased arrays and, and simplify the array configuration and, and design. Um, in, it, it does include the uh, radiation patterns for individual element, elements and mutual coupling, as well as the uh, RF models for, for each of the array elements. And uh, based on this overall uh, system evaluation, we can now uh, look at the matching work, uh, matching network uh, performance, and and evaluate the array performance, uh, system level measurements that will be used for evaluating the overall system, as well as as I said, uh, you know, this is now uh, automated, so it allows the user to pretty quickly configure uh, a system like this for their own particular uh, um, uh, requirements and then get these results in a, in a very short amount of time and be able to, uh, to uh, follow up with, with um, further design work. So uh, there is a lot more information at, uh, at our website and as well as the um, uh, National Instruments booth at, here at IMS. Thank you for your time.